Hi, this is Joe Bolin, and today we're going to look at the triparse method. The triparse method is an excellent method to use for converting string values into numeric data types. And the triparse method is available for about every numeric data type that we want to parse a string to a uh, numeric data type. So we have the integer triparse, the double triparse, and we even have the triparse for Boolean and date time functions as well. So let's take a look at the triparse method and compare it with some of the other methods that we could use and see why it is the best one I think to choose for when we want to take string input values from our GUI interface and convert it to a numeric data type for our processing. So let's take a look at our demo program. I have up on the screen a triparse method demo program that I wrote and we have basically a text box which in this case I called the uh, number text box and we have a label that I called the result valued label. So we're going to be inputting in uh, string values as well as uh, nice good quality uh, numeric values into this text box and then if we can process it at all we'll process it by multiplying it by two and giving us a result into the result value label and this will all happen when we hit the submit button which will evoke the submit button click event so let's take a look at the code I have on the screen our main code and first of all I want to show you that I have option strict turned off which is the default setting if we have not changed that in our options area of our Visual Studio environment. So this is how we might see it as a new person to Visual Studio. And I have coded uh, the code for this except for the area where I want to do the convert action. Let's take a look at the pseudocode as well as the code that results in this. And first of all, we come into our submit button click event and we declare the different variables that we're going to need for this procedure. In this case we're declaring two variables, one called number and the other one called result, and we're making them numeric double data types on that. So they will be the ones to receive our input and be used for our value when we get our calculation completed. Then we're going to take the value of the text box, in this case we call it the number text box, and we're going to convert it to a numeric data type and put it into the number variable on that which we've declared as I said as a double data type then we're going to process that calculation and in this case the processing of the calculations are going to be taking the value that's in the number uh, variable and multiplying it by two putting it into the uh, results variable which is also a double numeric data type. Then we're going to go back to the results variable, retrieve the value there, and turn it by converting it with a two string method back into a string and placing it into the text property of our results value label. That'll complete the action of our uh, process. Then the final cleanup activity is to put our cursor back into the number text box and select all the uh, data there in that text box uh, so that we can quickly change it to a new value for the next entry. Also we have a procedure down below uh, that if for some reason we change the value in the text box we want to clear out the results value labels uh, value with the setting the text property to a null string or a not null string, a string empty on that. We could use double quotes but the string empty uh, is a little bit clearer uh, and easier for compiling uh, on that so I use the string empty. Okay let's take a look at the actual code that we need to do here. The first thing a new person to coding might simply do is take our number text box and take the text property of it and assign it immediately to the, the number variable. And the computer will handle this fine with OptumStrict off. What will happen is the computer will take 
the string value that's in the text property of the number text box and do an implied conversion to the data type that number has been declared as. In this case, it's been declared as a double data type. Once it has the value in there, then we can continue on with the processing and finish out the procedure. So let's run this, first of all, with just the simple uh, implied conversion of the value, which in this case is a string coming in and putting it in the number of field to process. So I'm going to hit the Start button, which is F5. And uh, we're in debug mode at this point. And I'm going to enter in a valid number of 10 and hit Submit. And it processes fine. We get 20. 10 times 2 is 20. But let's say the user is maybe new or makes a mistake and enters in the string 10 and hit Submit. What happens? Well, we've got an invalid cast exception, and the program halts at this point in time, and we need it to make corrective action. So we don't want our program to error up at this point. We want to make it right. So we need to code a little bit better than the simple forcing with the implied conversion. So the first thing I'm going to do is take option strict and turn it on so we are more aware of narrowing and conversion factors, and we see right away that we get an error in our number text box dot text uh, not being processed correctly. So one of the methods we can use that a lot of new users use is the val function and it takes the value of the string that's entered in and tries to convert it to a number. And we'll see that we have now no errors and let's run it this time. Okay, it's compiling and our program is ready to go and I'm going to enter in 10 and submit it it works fine now I'm going to enter in TEN and submit it and I get 0 it recognizes right away that it's not a valid number and therefore gives back a result of 0 so 0 times 2 is 0 and that's why we see it work we didn't get an error, and that's why the val function is nice when we're new at learning how to program. But it's not necessarily the best way to code for processing our numeric input. So let's take a look at uh, another way to do that. As I said, the val function is very nice, but let's look at another way. We can use the uh, Visual Basic function called convert to double, and that one will take the value in here, convert it to a double data type. There's other conversion methods in Visual Basic, but we're using the convert to double because this is a number is a double uh, numeric data type we're going to convert to. So let's run this one and see this one work. Once again, I'll enter in value 10. It should convert fine and process it. And if I enter in TEN, submit it, we'll see that we get an error. We get an invalid cast exception unhandled error on that because it could not convert this correctly. It wanted to have a valid number, a valid string number in here to convert and TEN is not valid. So the convert to double um, uh, of Visual Basics uh, function is not a good one. Let's try the Frameworks version of the convert to double and try it as well. Once again, we compiled it in debug mode. I'm going to enter in the value 10 and it should work, which it does. But I've entered in TEN as a string. Once again, we're going to have an error. In this case, we could get a format exception. So we've got an invalid cast and an invalid and a format exception is two possible errors if we try to convert something that's not correct uh, using those uh, functions. So let's take a look at another one called parse. And in this case, parse, uh, we put the data type that we want to convert to in front of it. So I'm going to say double. And then in enter in parse. 
And if it parses correctly, it'll put it into the number field. So let's watch this one. OK. Now we're going to use the double parse method. First one we'll try with the correct value. It works. Now I'll type in TEN and see what happens. And we get a format exception error. It could not process it. So that one's not necessarily the best way to approach it uh, to solve our problem for input. So far, the valve function seems to be pretty good. Even if we enter in something incorrectly, we won't get an error. Let's take a look at another method called the triparse. And this one's written a little bit differently. What we do is we put in our triparse. Better spell right on that. And we have a second parameter in this case uh, from the value entered in, boot, boot, comma. And then we uh, the value we put in is the value or variable that we want to receive the correct parsing action. So as it comes through and examines whatever is in the number text box text property, if it does in fact parse correctly as a double data type, it will go into the number field. Otherwise, it won't go into the number field and number will remain its original default value of zero. So number, as we declared it up here, initializes as zero. So if it cannot parse this correctly, number will remain zero. And anything times zero, in this case, zero times two, will result in a value of zero. So let's watch this one. OK, I've compiled that one. And I'm going to move it a little bit here so we can see it. I'll enter in 10 and let it process. It works fine. Now let's put in TEN, submit it, and we get zero. Once again, it acts like the val function. It doesn't parse it, but it doesn't change this and inform the user that there's a problem. And so we could think that we're getting uh, something correct for our result, uh, but it is, in fact, not the correct result because we could not parse this value into a numeric data type. But triparse has a good option to it. Triparse acts not only as a function, but it acts as a, uh, or as a method, but acts as a function. And we can evaluate this whole function, or in this case, to see if it processed correctly. If it can process the value entered in into a number, or in this case, the number uh, field, uh, we'll get a value uh, return back of true. If it can't, we'll get back a value of false. So we can actually examine how it's returned. So we can condition with the if in front of it. Let's we'll say if then. And what we want to do is, in this case, since this one will, uh, if we get back a bad value, did not parse, uh, we want to enter in the action here. So I'm going to put not in front of this. And basically, I'm saying if I get a false value, and I'm saying if uh, not false, uh, or if not true, I should say, then we're going to process the action here. So what we want to do is inform the user we've got a problem. So I'll do the message box, better spell, and I'm going to say, uh, please enter a valid number and for the uh, caption to this one I'm going to say input error and for the third parameter I'm going to uh, give it simple message box OK button And I'm going to use for my icon the message box error icon. So I've got my message box set. And I'm going to uh, make this a little easier to read here by changing some things here. 
And so I've informed the user that, that we need a better value entered in. And then I'm going to uh, have the user uh, get that message. And I'm going to copy some code from below and paste it in here. Then I'm going to uh, have the cursor reset back to the uh, number text box, select all the value. And then I want to exit this procedure. So I'm going to use exit sub. So I early exit for my procedure. So I have to pass through here correctly with a valid number before I can go any further. Otherwise, I'm going to abort this procedure with the exit sub uh, command on this particular procedure section. And we can do that for a number of uh, inputs to check and do other kinds of validation as well. So let me change this first of all. It's no longer a to do. We've got this uh, coded. And let's watch it run. OK, at this time, I'll enter in again 10. And I get a correct value. Now I'll enter in an invalid string value 10. I'll get a nice message. Please enter a number. With my input error is the caption, and uh, I'll also get my OK button, and I've got the uh, icon showing I've got an error. I hit OK, and then my cursor will jump back up to the input box and highlight it as we coded in here. And I've exited the subroutine at this point, and I'm ready to try again. So I've coded for a situation where I've entered in invalid data. So let's enter in something that we know works. And if I enter in 5, which is not right, we get a nice message. We can inform the user then what's wrong. The user can fix it, resubmit it, and get the right answer. So we see that we can quickly code for invalid errors or input coming in from a text box by using the try parse looks at the input we entered in. If it can convert it, it will. And the beauty is it also gives us information whether it did it correctly or not. And we can examine if it converted. If it didn't convert correctly, then we can give the user a message. Or we can use the error provider, which I'll show you later on, uh, as a way to inform the user that something went wrong with the data entered in. And we need to have valid data before we can process any further. One of the most important things to remember in good programming is we want to keep the garbage from coming into our program. The old adage, garbage in, garbage out. Well, we don't want to process any garbage. Not in this case. We want to make certain it's valid, give the user a chance to fix what they've entered in by giving the informational message back so they can correct their action and then process correct data in our program. And if you do that, you won't have any errors occurring in your program that you haven't handled. And you also give the user the information they need to correct the data so they can process and have a good result with their program. So until the next time, get your hands dirty in the code and try this try parse method. It's available for all the numeric data types. So you can process and evaluate things. It's especially good for dealing with dates coming in as well. And I highly recommend you use this over some of the other possible ways of converting string values to numeric values for processing. So until next time, take care and have fun in the code.